Hi everyone, nice to see you again. Welcome back to Pacific Front Channel. It feels like we just entered 2022 yesterday, and now January is almost over. Just like the previous month, this week is the time for us to look back at what happened in the Indo-Pacific region in January 2022. Today, I have five interesting stories to share with you, from Indonesia's Rafal Update, Philippines' Brahmos Procurement, and more. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video. We'll start with the Rafal Procurement Update. The Indonesian Air Force is getting closer and closer to getting 36 Rafal from France. At the Ministry of Defense leadership meeting last week, the Indonesian Minister of Defense told reporters that negotiations for the program have been completed and now are waiting for activation, but he did not provide further details. Furthermore, a source close to the MOD told Jens that a preamble contract worth 5.8 billion euros or 6.56 billion dollar was signed with Dassault Aviation on 7 June 2021. I'm not sure if I missed it or it was just revealed a few days ago. As we all understand at that time, the Ministry of Defense is still in the process of seeking a foreign lender to fund the 36 Rafale for the Indonesian Air Force. Does the Minister of Defense statement mean that Indonesia has secured the funds? It could be. The French Embassy in Jakarta told CNBC Indonesia last week that the French Minister of Defense will visit Indonesia on 22 January. I assume it's for the contract signing of the Rafale. However, I don't think the date of arrival was true, because until today, it looks like she hasn't arrived yet. From the Air Force, we move to the Indonesian Army. Still from the Ministry of Defense leadership meeting event, the Indonesian Army received a total of 43 armored vehicles made by Pindad. Seven of them is something that we've been waiting for for months. The Badak or Rhino Fire Support Vehicle, meant to replace the aging FV-601 Saladin in the Army's Cavalry Battalion. The handover ceremony also included 26 Anua APC and Command variants, also 10 Komodo 4x4 APC variant. For the information, in 2016, the former Vice President Yusuf Kala said that the government would order 50 of this vehicle. However, at the signing ceremony in Indo-Defense 2018, it was reduced to only 14. About Badak FSV, this 6x6 vehicle has a length of 6 meters, width of 2.5 meter, and height including the turret of 2.9 meter. It's equipped with CMI Defense CSE 90LP low pressure turret with Cockerel MK3 90mm cannon. For its protection, Badak FSV has adopted Stanak Protection Level 3, which enables it to withstand the 12.7mm armor piercing rounds from 30mm range. Every modernization effort must be appreciated, especially if it's locally built equipment, meaning that we can reduce our dependency of foreign made weapons. Now, after the ANOA and BADAK are in operation, not only will the army have modern equipment, but also it will reduce their logistical footprint. Hopefully, more BADAK FSV can be ordered to be attached on every ANOA equipped mechanized infantry battalion. Next, we have news from the Indonesian Navy. There are two stories that I want to discuss from the Navy. The first one is about the commissioning of two new vessels. One is a purposely built hospital ship, KRI Dr. Wahidin Sudirohusodo. With this additional ship, the Indonesian Navy currently operates three hospital ships in total. With the fourth, the second of her class is currently under construction by PT PAL. Like we already discussed before, Indonesia's geographical position in the Ring of Fire makes it vulnerable to natural disasters like typhoons, earthquakes, and tsunamis. These natural disasters can happen without warning and can cause significant damage. In case of healthcare services in the affected area are damaged and unusable, we can still provide humanitarian assistance with these hospital ships. The second vessel is the Trimaran Fast Attack Craft Care I Golok. We finally can see one of her weapons, and to be honest, I'm a bit disappointed. I thought it would be the Bofors 40 Mark IV as it's been rumored before, but from what I see, it looks like just a manually operated cannon, which in my opinion, doesn't provide significant value for the vessel. What I mean is, manually operated cannons are not effective for modern vessel anymore, and the reason why they place the missiles inside the superstructure is to minimize her radar cross-section and make her stealthy. Adding conventional secondary armament like this will only reduce that characteristic. Hopefully, the Navy will change it soon. The second news from the Navy is about the Republic of Korea Navy plan to transfer a retired corvette to Indonesia. 
This plan was also announced by the Chief of Staff of the Indonesian Navy in a statement released on 20 January. The class of ship that will be transferred hasn't yet been revealed. However, it will likely be the Pohang class Corvette. I think we all know what's the meaning of this transfer, right? South Korea hopes the gifted Corvette will pave the way for the procurement of additional submarine or surface vessels by Indonesia. Personally, if it's a surface vessel, maybe. But a submarine? I don't think the Navy and the Ministry of Defense want theirs again. What do you think? Before we continue, if you find this video entertaining and useful, please hit the like button so that this video can spread to more people. Thank you! Alright, let's continue. Speaking of South Korean military equipment, it's reported that they have signed a contract with the United Arab Emirates or UAE to export the Cheonggong-2 medium-range air defense missile worth $3.5 billion, become the first country outside South Korea who operates this system. But no further information on how many systems the UAE will get. LIG Next One will become the prime contractor of this contract, as well as system integrator and is responsible for delivery to UAE Air Force. Hanwha Defense will produce Cheonggong-2 launch pad and load and transport vehicle. And Hanwha Systems will manufacture the system multifunction radar or MFR after improving it to suit the UAE's environment. The Cheonggong-2 has capabilities such as detection, tracking, identification, jamming, and link communication with radar, aircraft, and ballistic missiles. It is designed to engage not only incoming enemy aircraft, but also ballistic missile targets. Powered with a solid fuel rocket motor, it has a maximum firing range of 40 km, flight altitude of 20 km, and can reach a maximum speed of Mach 4 to Mach 5. It uses inertial guidance with mid-course updates and active radar homing for terminal guidance. Do you think this system is suitable to be procured as an alternative to NASAMS? We're gonna end today's video from the Philippines. After they bought Attack Helicopter, Black Hawk, Ascot, and Pandur 2, the Philippine modernization effort continues with the procurement of the Brahmos shore-based anti-ship missile. The document of the procurement itself was actually signed on the last day of 2021, but only being released on 12 January. The Philippine government will spend approximately 375 million for the system. This includes the delivery of three batteries, training for operators and maintenance personnel, as well as the necessary integrated logistic support or ILS package. The Coastal Defense Regiment of the Philippine Marines will be the primary user of the system. From what I see, this agreement is a win-win for both countries. For the Philippines, they need this system to defend their coastline and deter China. And for India, this agreement has raised their status as the main exporter of military hardware and possibly open up to a new potential buyer. As we know, Indonesia and Vietnam are also interested in buying this system. Congratulations to the Philippines on getting another weapon system for your armed forces. And once again, Indonesia is lagging behind on this matter. There you have it, new updates about the Rafal procurement program, new military equipment for the Indonesian Army and the Indonesian Navy, South Korea's air defense missile export, and a new and powerful coastal defense system for the Philippines. What do you think about these stories? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it. Please visit my merch store, the link is in the description below. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.